Oh boy, you're going to get used to that sound. It's very annoying. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just um about QT and uh, adding some music to, to the QT. So for those who never been with us before, uh, our website is cpplondonuni.com. Uh, the first thing which I would advise to do is to subscribe to our mailing list so I can get in touch with you in an easy way. So I, you know, if you send me an email here and there, contact me on Slack, it's very difficult to getting track of everybody because the, the group is getting larger and larger. Uh, so do subscribe so then I can send you the update. Uh, very important, if you are coming for this class, please do uh, uh, basically book your place at Skills Matrix website. Uh, the reason being uh, the streaming plus uh, the room, uh, the cost of that is normally something like close to £500 per session. Uh, we get in this for free, but only <coughs> on the basis that we bring enough people. If our group will shrink to very small numbers, then obviously uh, you know, the, they will decide actually, well, we prefer to teach, you know, give this space to JavaScript or PHP. So it's your choice. Uh, so a small help from, from you which you can offer is basically uh, a book and, and, and obviously come along. If you need, uh, if you think we should do something better. If we, if you want to cover something, uh, please let us know. Send me, the, uh, send me some feedback so we can basically work with that. Uh, and obviously share your ideas uh, with, with us. We, after each meeting, we're going to the pub, Beer Shanke, uh, for a couple of beers and have a chat. So you're very welcome to join us. Uh, the meeting is a weekly meeting, obviously. So come along every week, bring your laptop. Uh, for those who need a uh, sea lion license, let me know. Send me an email uh, with the subject sea lion and inside the email your name and your email address. So then I'll email you back the, the, the license. Uh, that's pretty much from me and I'm passing to Tristian. Okay. Good evening everybody. Hello. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, right. Standard first slide, just Tom said, we want to hear from you, we want to know what you want us to tell you. We've had one good suggestion already, slightly scary suggestion, it's all about um, value categories and R values and X values and the other ones. So uh, yes, we'll, uh, we'll find some time to go over that. Which You touched on it, didn't you, Ollie, on one of your... I did, yeah, we did a presentation, we did the going to all debt, that's what they want, or yeah. uh, re redo it. Yes. But uh, yes, anyway, we have this, we have this uh, Slack channel that uh, you can come and talk to us when we're not here. So um, if you're not familiar with Slack, it's, it, well, it's basically just a sort of chat room type program. You can use it from your browser or there's a, an app you can download. Uh, there's a C++ uh, room, uh, what do you call it, group channel on there. And uh, that's got various kind of sub-channels, and one of those is for us. Uh, although there are various others that are pretty good. Learn, hash learn is a good one if you're 
pointing to there. So yeah, um, you need an invite. So just uh, go to that URL and enter your email address, and I'll send you an invitation, which you can use to join the group. So, <coughs> sorry. Uh, today's lesson plan. We've got a very, very, very brief introduction to QT for people who haven't who aren't familiar with it. We've been using it a little in the last the last couple of sessions on this uh, Pomodoro timer project. Um, then I'm going to do a bit of a demo of how to uh, use it to play sounds. Hopefully that'll work, fingers crossed. Um, somewhere between my house and here, I've managed to lose my completed versions of things um, due to some git screw-ups on my part. So um, it's all gone and I'm just going to be making it up as I go along. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and then we're going to use what we just learned from this in order to get, hopefully, get our Pomodoro project to squawk at us, play a very annoying alarm noise. Uh, it's literally called annoying alarm clock um, when, we, when we hit zero. Okay, does that sound good to everybody? Yep. Yeah. Um, so the first thing we need to do, if actually before we get into any of the chatting, has everyone got... Uh, QT and all that stuff installed from the past couple of weeks. That's new, new. Or, new VM. or or Ollie put together this uh, <coughs> uh, VM that you can use. It runs. Yeah, VM bar much ah. All the tenants in here in VMs. Got it working? Is it is it running? Is it booting? Yeah. SUSE Linux. Yeah, that's cool. And it's full screen. Um, yeah, that looks right. Yeah. Right. Well, that was easier than it was last week. Yeah, I've got yeah. correct drivers for virtual box into it now. So. Oh, you've updated it. Oh, excellent. Right. We'll start with a disclaimer. I'm not a QT expert. I've used it uh, at work probably five years ago now. Uh, memory's a little rusty on some of the details, and it's changed. That was back when I was QT4, we're now on QT5. I'm only going to do a sort of very high level thing, but if you've got specific questions, I'm probably, you know, I'll try and help, but um, don't trust me, trust the documentation, because the QT documentation is uh, first class. So um, if in doubt, Google it and trust, trust that more than you trust me. Nonetheless, I'll try and do my best. Are we all, are we broadcast, are we going out live, is it all working? Excellent. We are. So if, uh, if anyone online, well if you can hear me hopefully, if anyone's got any questions there's a little uh, chat I'm box, text box on I'm, uh, I'm monitoring YouTube so Tom will yell out your questions at me. So what is QT? Well QT they prefer, first of all they, they like you to pronounce it cute, which I just can't bring myself to do so to me it's QT and that's what we're going to call it. Cute. Mm. QT. Uh, it's a very, very extensive uh, collection these days of, of software frameworks. Um, initially, uh, to write GUI apps, uh, which is still mostly what it's used for, but it's, it's got a whole, it's got tons of stuff in there now. Uh, it began in 1991, which makes it older than some of the people who've attended this class, which is, is quite strange. Uh, it also means that it predates standard C++ by a very long time, well, by a very long time, by about seven years. So a lot of the ways it does things were already old when C++ 98 came out, and now we're on C++ 17. Some of, some of its ways of doing things are, are a little dated, shall we say. Uh, so the programming style differs, so yeah, the programming style differs somewhat from, from standard C++. If you're familiar with uh, Object oriented languages like uh, Java and C Sharp, it's a lot closer to that. Everything's it's a big object oriented hierarchy. Um, whereas uh, the standard library, Boost, and, and more modern things like that, they don't tend to use inheritance quite so much. Um, there are very few templates in, uh, in QT, but lots of pointers. So I don't know whether people see that as a good thing or a bad thing. So, as I say, it's all uh, object-orientated, and just as 
In Java, everything inherits from the java.lambda object, or in C sharp, you've got, I think it's called system object, I can't remember. Uh, but everything in Qt, everything inherits from Q object. And uh, widgets, so a widget, I don't know if anyone's done GUI programming for widgets, are the things you see on the screen buttons and list boxes and uh, even windows in Qt and widgets. Um, they're all subclasses of Q widgets, which in turn inherits from Q object. So it's all this big hierarchy. Uh, this is the funny bit. So Qt has these new keywords. They're sort of keywords. Uh, signals and slots are the two I remember. There might be others. but uh, So you write your code with these keywords in. And then what happens is your code is run through a preprocessor called the meta object compiler or mock. And mock takes these, these keywords and it expands them out into real C code, adds a lot of other stuff like type registration. Hi. Um, adds a lot of other stuff like runtime type registration, uh, which is all very useful. Um, and then that preprocessed code is passed to the C compiler which in turn runs a C preprocessor on it, which expands some other macros, which then goes to the compiler itself. It sounds very complicated, but in general, it's not because, it, as I say, it's been around for so long that um, most build systems, so CMake, uh, that we use QMake, which is Qt's own build system, uh, they're all, they all know how to, how to call mock for you. You just have to give it the right option. So is that all? All nice and clear so far. No. No. <laughs> well, that's not my fault, is it? So, has anyone done any any sort of GUI programming before? Not in C++. Not in C++, but in other languages. So, what 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 kind of back C sharp? Okay. Yeah, Windows. Like no. Yeah. Okay. But you're familiar with the principles, and you you had your hand up. Uh, and Java. <coughs> All right. Well, you're you're. Get going with no problem there. Um, so most, well most, all that I can think of GUI systems are based on this idea of events. Okay, so what happens is your application does all its initial setup and then you enter this, what's called the main loop. And the main loop just keeps spinning around, spinning around, spinning around, waiting for events to come into the system. Events are things like a mouse click or even a mouse movement or a keyboard click or a network. Uh, packet coming in. Those are events. And then your code reacts to events as they come in. And eventually some event occurs that will cause the application to quit. Like if you close the last window or you know hit the whatever the keyboard combination is to, to quit the application. Which is just that. I should have looked at my slides really, shouldn't I? So it's not, when you're doing good programming, it's not a sort of imperative style. So what we've really done so far is you just execute a list of instructions. You start at the beginning, you run through this list of instructions, you've perhaps got some loops in there. Once you get to the bottom, you finish. Go programming is a bit different in that it's all kind of, it's reactive. It's a reactive system. So an event comes in, things react to it, and then eventually one of those one of those things tells it to quit the loop. That doesn't look very healthy. <laughs> as long as it works. It's all right, mine, mine's falling apart. And it's, you know, this, these things aren't supposed to fall apart, are they? But anyway, so signals and slots. So again, if you don't do programming, you're probably familiar with the idea of, of signals. Signals are the way that the events propagate through the system. Okay, so all Q objects, this is really what, what the base, or one of the things the base Q object does, is it defines these, these methods for dealing with what they call signals and slots. So an object can fire a signal, or rather, let me put it a different way, you connect a, a signal on one object to a slot on another object. And when 
This object fires a signal, it runs the code in the other slot. So a slot is just a function, and when the signal is fired, it runs the code in that function. Yes? Is that different from Vance and Vance? Absolutely different from? Vance and Vance. It doesn't. It's just a different name for it. Uh, it is a little bit different from, uh, so Coco uses delegates a bit more, I think, where you know you define a class with certain methods that, uh, which QT, it's, it's about connecting to slots, connecting to signals. And so it's, it's slightly different to Coco, I think, although uh, that was even longer ago than I did QT, so uh, <coughs> that's probably all changed now as well with the iPhone. Anyway, so signal is it's fired when the event occurs. So the button class Q, I think it's just called Q button, has a clicked signal. And then your user interface, your, your backend code can connect to this clicked signal. You can define a slot, and then it'll run your code to do whatever your application should do when the button gets clicked. I'm making it all sound really simple, right? <laughs> so far. Yeah, excellent. That's really all there is to it. Uh, there's a little bit more to it because in Qt5 you can have, I don't know what the proper term is, but sort of ad hoc slots where rather than actually formally using the Qt syntax to define a slot, you just use a lambda function. Um, but the principle is the same. It, it runs some code when something happens. So memory management in Qt. I told you this is a very brief introduction, right? I'm absolutely racing through it, because this is, this is it. This is, this is my last slide on the introduction to QT. I've gone through it all in six minutes. So QT memory management style is unusual, <coughs> should we say. Uh, another word might be archaic. Um, so, what we've done in this course and what you generally see in modern C++ is we, we like to put objects on the stack so their lifetimes are managed automatically. We use smart pointers, unique pointer, and shared pointer, so that we have uh, deterministic lifetimes. Uh, Qt is a bit more complicated. So when you create a Q object, just about every Q object constructor has an optional uh, parent field. And what happens is that you pass, when you create it, so you just call new, let's say new Q button, and you pass it a pointer to its parent. And then that, par that parent takes ownership of the thing you've given it. And then when you delete the parent, it'll call delete on the child. So, so you, you, you create a new Q object and you pass in the parent? Yes. So how does the parent then know because in the constructor, in the constructor, it calls a method on the parent object. To, uh, it's literally called add child or something like that. It calls a method on the parent object that registers that, and so it knows that when the parent object destructor runs, it calls the destructors for each of its children. So it's it works, and you know if you if you get everything right, no no memory gets leaked, and and it's all good. But it's it's very different in style to what we like to do in modern C++. Uh, is there any plan to bring this back to the latest standard? This is so ingrained in Qt and has been since 1991 that... It's a C-style programming. It's a C-style programming, exactly, exactly. And, you know, there were no such thing as a smart pointers when they started. There were no there's no perfect forwarding, our value references, all of that stuff. So it, 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 it kind of makes sense from where they came from. And it's a commercial product, right? So they don't want to release <laughs> QT6 that requires people to update millions of lines of code. Like the place I used to, be, used to, used to work, we had, a, we had a QT app that was, I think, 8 million lines of code. And we... That, that was, if not, fortunately, not me that I had to maintain it, but that was QT3 because even the small number of changes between 3 and 4, you know, it was just, it would have taken too long to go and update it. So we're dealing with really huge 
the MasterCard is really heavily used QT. Uh, so they are understandably reluctant to make massive architectural changes. So, so this is what we have. So we have this, this memory management style. So it uses a lot of pointers. It uses the new keyword everywhere, which again, if you've been to these classes, we've, we've said don't use new ever. Um, and now I'm telling you the opposite because in QT you pretty much have to. Okay, so that was my very brief introduction to QT. Yes? Slots, <coughs> when you, you erase a signal, does it happen on a second thread? No. So it's pretty synchronous in that sense? Uh, in that sense, yes. I mean, you can, they have these Q thread things and you, you can use different threads, but uh, by default it all happens in the one thread, unless you do take special action. Um, so, uh, as far as I know, every single GUI system, you can only make uh, calls, user interface calls, in the main thread anyway, or in the thread that initializes the graphic system, which is generally a, uh, generally a requirement on the, the, sort of the operating system. So, QT is calling operating system level functions for you to create, you know, underneath it'll be a Windows button or a Cocoa button or a, a whatever. Uh, and those, you know, the Windows API probably has a restriction that you can only make UI calls on the main thread. Most of them do. So, uh, I'm, I, haven't ha I haven't done a lot of, of multi-threaded stuff in QT. Uh, but I would imagine that you can't make UI calls anywhere except the main thread. You can probably use signals on different threads for doing other things, for you know, kicking off a background process or getting notification when that completes. Um, yeah. In essence, I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is when I said I wasn't an expert. We've reached the, the edge of my the edge of my knowledge. Uh, I can tell you it works in GTK because I know a lot more about that, but uh, not QT, unfortunately. Uh, right, any further questions from a very, from a thousand mile view of QT before we move on? No? Excellent. Anybody online? No. Uh, is there anybody online? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? People? Oh. I think the weather is. is adverse effect on people people's internet out. connections as well yeah <laughs> okay we're going to have some fun well it might be fun uh, I'm going to try doing something live for you just to demonstrate playing sounds in QT um, so we have this repository and if you want to play along you can uh, check this out um, and see if you can build it in your, your ID or your The main file, yes. Yeah. Yes, we're about to fill it with stuff.
Then what do you know more about those reports than they do? What's that one? to install QT multimedia. Working, Tom? Yep. Everybody else, can we build this empty application? Yeah. So we're using a, a new framework, it's QT Multimedia. So, for example, Tom didn't have the dev packages in, installed. So if you don't do that, then. One of them is you, so huh? one of them is you. No. No? No, you can sign on the uh, panel. Are you on the admin? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Sorry.
Still very quiet in here. <laughs> Um, okay, so have you, you've uh, done the like, pre coding bit? Okay. Oh, uh, well, even so, if you go to, uh, to the Qt Creator, So, uh, so probably file. Uh, well, yes, if you can go out to his, yeah, get QT created to find. Um, yeah, maybe it's under tools. So that would make sense. So do you did install CMake? Um, I just put Qt Creator on there. Okay, so if you, I don't know, I don't know what distro you're using to install Pax. It's a CentOS, so it's done by Yum. Okay, so just uh, probably Yum install CMake. No, I should, right, should do it. And then you'll have to restart Qt Creator, but hopefully it will pick it up after that. So I'm about to do, it's not over my shoulders, but live, so. Hey, so you just did a perfect resolution. No, no, it's still all good now. You can make that full screen if you want. Has support for all sorts of build systems. Oh, okay, so you can use it in um, yeah. the building engine. Okay, well, that makes sense. All right, yeah, that's just all now. Okay, so if you restart QT Creator, then fingers crossed. It's got all this effort to build a literally empty project. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be worth it in the end. It'll make annoying alarm clock sounds on the computer and then it'll look back. Okay, uh, so if you uh, just git clone that URL, or just in the, in the terminal, so just type git clone, or maybe make it directly. No, it's fine. Uh, that's not the Oh no, you're right. No, sorry, you're you're actually right. So, sorry, yeah, he's right. You need to open that that URL in the browser. Yeah, yeah. 
So if we uh, open the file project again. Try just editing this email list. I know it says minimum required 3.2, just change that to 2.8. Hopefully it'll work. Yeah, it doesn't. I hope I'm not using any new CMake features. Otherwise, I don't really know what I'm going to use. No. 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 No, that's good. We're nearly there. We're pretty nearly there. So, uh, back to Young. You still have to tell them what Uh And now it's probably going to be. Uh, I, don't, I have no idea what the package should be called in, in, in CentOS, but it's called something like QT Multimedia Dev. QT5 <laughs> Multimedia. Uh, I can tell you how it's called in uh, QT Multimedia 5 Python Dev. In the print, it's called QT yeah. Multimedia yeah. Uh, yeah. Multimedia uh, Hyphen Dev all over case. Like it because I never read the So it's so the the RPM name. QT5 dash QT multimedia all lowercase dash devel D E V E L devel We'll get there in the end, we'll get there in the end. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's so old. It is a bit dated, yeah. Reliable, that's what it is. Really, yeah. Really good though. How are we getting those guys? Everybody ready? Yeah, yeah. We're finished. Nearly there. Uh, you shouldn't need to restart, no, just, uh, yeah, and you should run the app and it should do absolutely nothing. Oh, you want to run the app? Is that correct? So if you just, if you know how to build, then that should be all right. Oh, yes. 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 Right, we've got success over here. Success there? Yeah, excellent. You're way ahead. No problems at all. You guys doing all right? You? Not a lot of things. Almost there. Yeah, it's almost doing everything that can do. Oh, I'm left handed. That's well, <laughs> that does make things easier. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so everyone's got this, so I will uh, get rid of that. It's on, yeah, there's a link on the desktop. 
Was this man wearing these things? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, this one. This time, yeah. Computer goes beep, 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 beep. You can do that with them. You don't have to do the objection. The only problem is that now I keep it. Is anybody using an SVC? Well, you can use CMI for Windows. Oh, okay, yeah, I know. Yeah. Some people do use an SVC. No, I don't think so. I'm using CMI. See, everyone's sensible. Unix systems. Except I, my Unix system didn't work with when I tried the QT Multimedia API. Yeah, it took me a while to find the running package. Yeah. Or not entirely sure, but completely. That really helps people with it, yeah. 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 Are you sure you agree? Have you read it all? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't have any plus option around this time. <laughs> 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 yeah. You don't now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It might get snowed in. Sorry? It might get snowed in. Not that it makes a difference if it's out of the It's a coin. You know, the worst case, you can get a walk. Yeah. 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 Today I don't have a cheek. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? I, I can mine. Yeah. Actually. Well, you look pretty great aside from this one. Well, I don't know, I just find it's more trouble. You know, it's it's nice you know, you kind of the the yeah, it's a bit of 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 no, I mean, it's just sort of, no, I mean, the thing is, it's the worst case, as you say, you walk. Yeah. So, be where it's really handy. It's 15 miles only, so it's not like, I would walk for three days. Okay. We've got project resources. Like you, but I didn't get this by walking. <laughs> we see. That's the, that's the only way to get to, to, to lose it. Some like QT sounds example. Someone's, someone's way ahead of us. I thought that was a lot of battery running out. I don't know if that was screaming, saving me. It's a little slow now through the end, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if you really need to run over. Maybe you don't use two processes or something.
this is the first time it's ever started up, so it's really As an idea, yeah. Um, have you heard of the actual Los Angeles Press Book? The Star Yeah. Uh, I've heard of it, I haven't read it. Well, it it's probably like not really new to me, but uh, what I find useful about that is that it actually ran through the thing by Elon Musk using Vector yeah. as an example. And I was just thinking, I don't know, I'm only suggesting this, I'm not, I'm not making any comment on what you've actually done. Um, I was just thinking that for a lot of people, it's like, I think a lot of that is before, but that is a useful book to walk through oh, yeah. and hear. Yeah. To say that, okay, this chapter is about this. You could probably summarize each chapter to about 15 minutes of <coughs> speech and, and then another 15 minutes of just thought and going through the code. Is that, is that the only good one? Okay, yeah. I mean, like I said, I haven't have actually read the book, so yeah. I, I know of it and it's apparently very good. Yeah. Uh, but I, I haven't actually. And it's 300 pages, and it's probably about 10 lessons worth of something in there. Okay, so you go to like writing your own vector and then it goes through, okay, this is what you've written. This is how the standard vector works. Okay, okay. why does it work this way? Yeah. So that sounds, that sounds really good. Because it goes to things like iterating, and I think a lot of people know that the concept of an iterator versus an algorithm versus an industry. Yes. Yeah. That, that actually oh, sounds, um, sounds really good. Yeah. I've been looking for something I wouldn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really irritating. Mine's got no phone, I can't. All right. Lawrence Lapsoff's taking his time, but I think we're pretty much all there. So let's go. Let's do some live coding. Now, as I said, a little bit of a problem because I lost all my solutions. So uh, I'm just going to have to make this up as I go along. This is literally going to be live coding. It's not. It's, uh, yes, it's going to be an adventure. So hopefully everyone's got this nice empty file here. Uh, and somewhere we can see the sidebar. So the, the, the project's only got three files in it. It's got the CMake lists, which just defines the, the build system. It's got this annoying alarm clock wave file, which we're about to hear quite a bit. And uh, it's got this nice empty main. So we want to, um, we want Tom to come back. Oh, okay. never mind. He loses out. We want to play sounds. Where do we start? Was that link? There was the link in the, uh, in the project, in the, you know, Tom's, Tom's introduction. The link told you to read, go read all about QT5 media player. QT media players, this one which is a really handy class that is actually very, very powerful. Um, so this is what I mean by the QT documentation being excellent, by the way. It really. Um, so it lists, so this is a Q object, it's got slots and signals. Uh, and it gives you a really detailed description of the whole class. That's great. Uh, and QT Media Player, Q Media Player is the one I wanted to use. Unfortunately, for reasons that I wasn't able to get to the bottom of, it really doesn't like my laptop. It claims it can't decode anything. Like I can create the classes and make it run, but as soon as I try and give it a file, it says I don't know how to decode this file, even if it's a WAV, which I don't understand. So QT, Q Media Player was unfortunately off the menu for me. But that's okay, because Qt has got a really wide selection of APIs. And they've got this other one called QSound, which is a lot simpler. So Q Media Player is enormously powerful. It can play videos, it can put all sorts of effects on the video, it can you know you can write a full blown kind of you know VLC or something with it if you really want to. Uh, the Q Sound class is much simpler. As we can see, these are the only functions. It's got. Uh, 
And in fact, if we go to the description, we'll see that there's this, there's in fact just a static method that you can give it. It's Q sound play, a path to the file, and that's it. So that, that's us done in one line, hopefully. So let's, let's try it. So we'll include the Q sound header. Put this, uh, just have the file path of the, as a constant at the top so we don't have to copy it everywhere. And then we'll just call this static method. So it's a static method, so we don't need a Q sound instance. We can just call this one. It tells you the parameters. And we'll call it file path. Why not constructs per constant? Oh, it's constructs. Yeah, yeah, it's. Do you need the constant separate constant? Uh, yeah, you do because we're. It's a pointer to a const car. It's a const pointer to a const car star. It's a const pointer to a char star. No, it's a const pointer to a const char star. No, you need the constant at the start to get a const. No, a const expert gives you that. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. So yeah, you could put another another const in there if you really wanted to, but it's actually redundant with the const expo. Any reason why we're using char star instead of a string? Because standards. Firstly, this doesn't require an allocation. Secondly, uh, if you looked at the the arguments, oh, this takes a Q string, not a standard string, mm -hmm. and it has a direct conversion from a car star to a Q string, but not a direct conversion from a standard string to a Q string. So that's why I'm, I could make this a const Q string up so here. So should that now play the sound in that form? That'd be nice if it did, wouldn't it? It would be. This would be a very short demonstration if it did. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's not going to work, because I don't want to ruin the surprise, but it, it doesn't. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when we run this. So we build it. Yes. So I'll turn the sound right up. Run it. Nothing. Run it. Nothing. In fact, just some sort of bizarre error message that I haven't been able to get to the bottom of. Um, we're using this right. We're doing what the we're doing exactly what the example said we should do. Q sound play this, and yet we're getting nothing. So does anybody have any idea why this might be? It's got stop play. I think you have to have a, an actual application where you run it, and then it looks at the event loops and you know, you do all the sorts of Absolutely the right answer. So this is, this is a, a non-blocking method, right? So this assumes that you're running a full QT application. So there's a main loop running. And what we said about the main loop is it just sits there, running around, like <coughs> waiting for events. Um, and in fact, what happens is that you fire off this play command, and then main immediately exits. So in fact, exits so quickly that the play doesn't even get to begin yet. So what we need is to be able to start up an event loop. So the way we do that is we need, uh, you can't just use a, a there, there is a Q event loop class, but what you, what you need is a Q application. Um, or in fact, one of the parent, we're going to use one of the parent classes of Q application. This Q application is for when you're doing a full GUI widgets and all of that, which we're not doing in this case, so we can use a, a slightly simpler one called Q core application. And there's an 
matter which one is at the top, Q stand or Q application? You want the core application to go first. Okay. And we can see the parameters it takes, which are the command line options for our main. But just creating the application isn't enough. We have, to, we have to actually kick off the event loop. And the command to do that is this method called exec. And if we, could, if we look at this, it shows you that exec returns an int. And if you want to go and look at the documentation, which you're more than welcome to, you'll see that what it expects you to do is to actually return, that's the return value from main. So if you remember main returns an int, uh, conventionally zero means success and any other number means a failure. So we're gonna, when we call app.exec, it kicks off the main loop, it starts processing events and eventually one of those events is gonna tell the app to stop uh, with a return code. We'll of zero if it's successful. Sorry. Did it work? Uh, no, but it's a 20 second sample. Yay! However, that is really annoying, so let's stop that. So this works now. However, let me just do it again with my sound right down. Now the sound's finished. And what's happened? The app is still running, yeah, because the main loop is just sitting there whirling away waiting for events because we haven't told it to stop. Right, so if we had a GUI at this point, you know, it would still be waiting for events. We could click buttons and what have you. Uh, but we have to actually click, click stop down there. And you see it exits with a funny exit code. It's not zero. So what we really want to do is when the sound finishes playing, because this is a really simple app, when the sound finishes playing, we want, to, we want the app to quit. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's go back to our key sound documentation. And uh, what we really want is some sort of signal that we can connect to that says, this is finished. So, we'll have a look through. Do, 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 do. Well, yeah, unfortunately, got slots there. It doesn't look like QSound has any signals at all. How about the public stop while it's stop? That's that's uh, so that stops the sound while it's playing, but that's a slot, right? So you could connect that to another signal of somewhere else uh -huh. if someone had a button. You have two buttons in the UI, one that says play and one that says stop. And then you could connect the stop button to the stop signal on the QSound object. Oh, okay. But we want the opposite. Rather than a slot, we want a signal. From, we want the QSound object to tell us when it's finished. Okay. So let's see if there's anything else that would help us out. Well, this, there's this method here. Q sound is finished. That sounds promising, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not a signal. It's just a normal... But let's see if we can use it. So while... Oh, no, wait, sorry, we have to do something else first. 
this is a static method. We don't have an instance. Uh, and I've gone past it now, but uh, the Q sound is playing, or is finished, sorry. This is an instance method. It's not a static method. So we need an instance of the class. But that's pretty easy. We can just do Q sound sound. And again, we have to give it the file name. We can just call sound.play. This time, it's an instance method, not a sound, not a. So we just make sure, we'll just run that and make sure it works. Yeah, that's fine. Good. You're looking confused about this, Tom. Yeah, oh, just, just checking, because I was modifying it there. So this does exactly what it did before, except it now does it in two steps. We create a Q sound object, we call dot play on it. So before it was just this convenience method that just did it all in one go. And the reason we want this is because we want to do, well, something like this. We're all going to get really irritated with the annoying alarm sound scene. Can you uh, improve the font size? Uh, increase the font size. That's a good question. Uh, this is already in presentation mode, so I don't okay. think. <coughs> I think if you press command and then slide, okay, uh, the, 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 the thingy that, that might increase the size of the screen. Yeah, no. Just have a look. Ah, presentation mode font size, that's handy. Let's turn that right up. It's going to be giant now. Is it? Is that any different? That looks the same. Maybe you need to come up. There we go. It's gigantic now. So does everyone see what we're trying to do here? We're creating this Q sound object, we're calling play on it, and then we're saying while not sound is finished, so while it's not finished, we're just going to do nothing. We're, we're just going to sit and wait for it to finish. Before I click run, what do people think this is going to do? You will play, and then it will go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ooh, no. We've got nothing this time. No sounds, no nothing. Hello. I have to quit the app. Okay, so this is a bit of a problem. Because what's happening here is we're sitting in this while loop, we're saying, while the sound is not finished, wait for it to finish. Unfortunately, 
because Qt is all event-based, it doesn't actually start playing the sound until we kick off the event loop, which is down here. So we're going to be sitting around forever waiting for it to start playing the sound. But shouldn't then the, on the line 12 start playing the sound? No, because it's... it's uh, so it needs to get to the up exec so that... Before that it begins playing the sound, thing. yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're... Uh, we're having fun with QT. If you, you weren't here the last couple of weeks. No, uh, it's fine, just carry on. I'll read out to you guys. I mean, you can join somebody closer yeah. so you can at least observe. Well, this, this bit you can just see what I'm doing if you, if you have any questions. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. Not if you have any questions, keep them to us. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, right, so. What we really need is a signal. We need, a, we need an object that's going to give us a signal when it's finished. Because this is finished method, on the face of it, isn't enough. Unfortunately, Q sound is so simple that it doesn't give us a signal when it's finished. Fortunately, and I said QT had a lot of classes, it's got this other one called Q sound effect. This is designed for low latency sound, like playing dings when you click a button and things like that. Uh, but that's fine for what we're doing. We don't think we need the low latency bit, but it doesn't hurt. So now, this, uh, this is a bit more complicated. It has a lot more functions, as you can see. It has slots and ooh, it has signals. It has a lot of signals, in fact. But I'm sure we can we can get one of those to do what we want. So instead of Q sound now, let's see if we can use Q sound effect instead. Oh, okay, so Q sound effects API is a bit different. We've got a no matching constructor. So let's go quickly to the constructors. We see that, okay, we don't give it any arguments. It has, as I said, this standard Q object parent, but we don't have a parent object for it. So we just leave that as its default argument. Okay. So we're just going to default construct the sound. By the way, if you're wondering, this is literally what I was doing this afternoon, was, was going through the Qt API like this. Um, so this is, I wouldn't say it's quite unprepared, but this is, this is real. This is, this is how I did it. Um, so then we got the, so we default construct it, and then we got this set source method. Set the current URL to play URL. So I'll skip a step because I already know how to do this. Set sound, set source. So we've got to create one of these QRL types, and it's got QURL has this from local file method, which is rather handy. We'll get rid of this while loop because it's it's wrong, as we've just seen. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone else has got the documentation open, but I think the play method is just the same as it was for the other the other file, the other class. <laughs> By the way, if you hate beeping sounds, you've come to completely the wrong session. What's bothering you, Tom? It shows that up on the return uh, can't resolve variable up. And I have the key for application up. Let's figure out why you do why. Uh, because you've got this thing here, so I'll just get rid of that and tell you. Oh, cool, thank you.
I've also just realised how close my laptop speakers are to this <laughs> microphone here. So sorry for anybody who's watching online who's about to get deafened by an annoying alarm clock noise. But yay, it works. So what we want to do now, now we've got, we've got a cue sound effect rather than a cue sound. I've lost my mouse pointer, where's it gone? We've got a cue sound effect. We're setting the source. It's the URL, so presumably we could play things over the internet, which would be a bit mad. Um, we're playing the sound, and then we enter the main loop. And we still, we've got no way of terminating the main loop yet. So that's what we were trying to do. We want to use we want to use a signal. So let's have a quick look at its signals. Uh, category change, loop count change, loop change, blah blah blah. Playing change. This looks promising. Let's click on playing change. The playing change signal is emitted when the playing property is changed. Properties are a bit of QT I didn't get into, but uh, they're a bit like properties in C-sharp. Uh, again, they use some of this special meta-object compiler stuff to, um, so you can introspect them at runtime. Uh, so it is playing, is a bool, and it's got a notify signal called playing changed. Let's see if we can connect to this playing change signal and what we've got. So, to do that, we use a static method on QObject, QObject Connect, and as you can see, it's got a whole load of really complicated overloads. But luckily, I've done this before. <laughs> so the first one is a QObject, pointer to a QObject. Um, because as I said, Q QT uses pointers heavily. As it happens, we've got a stack allocated sound, so we pass it the address of sound. Now we need to give it the signal. Uh, we can either do this as the text name of the signal, but the more modern way to do it is to pass it the function pointer. And now we need to give it... So the one I'm aiming for is this overload here, where you just define an ad hoc slot. And we're going to use a lambda function for this. do is we're just going to out, output a debug message saying we've got the playing change signal and I really hope I got this right oops that was the wrong button didn't mean to do that stop 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 all right, let's get rid of the debugger and try it normally. Ooh. <coughs> Have I got multiple what, sorry? Shells. Well, uh, no, for some reason, every time I run the app, it comes up with, it puts a new tab on this. You got it. I mean, it shows the golf playing signal, and you are also showing a three. 
yes, that is what it's supposed to do, and I don't know why mine isn't. So if you want to. <laughs> well, yeah, I fully expected it to send show me the message, and it isn't. It, <laughs> really got, it did at the end once it uh, played the, the sound. So oh, of course. Yes. All right. So sorry. You're you're absolutely right. <sighs> Should have just thought it through for a few more seconds. So what happens here is we call play, and that sets the playing flag to true. And only after we've called play do we connect to the signal. So the signal only fires when playing, playing gets changed. So of course it doesn't finish, it doesn't change again until the sound is finished. So we've got to sit here for a few seconds. Yay! So it did work. I wasn't going completely mad. The perils are doing these things live. You're doing great. <clears throat> right. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move this play command to after sound.play. Right, so we're connecting to the signal, then we're playing. So now we should see two messages, right? One when it begins and one when it finishes. So that's the one when it begins. Let's silence it. And there we are. So we're almost there. Now all we want to do is to tell our app to quit when, the, when it's finished, right? How do you quit the loop? How do you quit the loop? Well, that's actually quite easy. <laughs> Have you done this before or was that just a guess? Well, I looked it up. Well, that, yes, is literally what we have to do. So we can get rid of this line. We'll just comment it out for a minute. Run this. And ah. No way, we want to do that on the second. Oh, jumping ahead. Yes, you're right. Um, I was first going to, I first wanted to show you this error. Um, this is actually really quite a nice error message for uh, for C. This is a lambda, a lambda function in which we don't capture any variables. So we can't call our instance method app because we haven't captured it, which Variable app cannot be implicitly captured in the lambda with no capture default specified. Well, the capture default, we just put this and symbol in there. That means all our variables that are in scope at the moment uh, are captured by reference. So we can just call, call this. So now if we try and run this, it should compile. So just a silly question. Mm -hmm. If it's captured by value, would that be a different type? Um, I honestly don't know what would happen. I don't know whether it's copyable, because that would that would attempt to copy the app instance. But I don't, I don't actually know. Oops, didn't mean to go to clean. Uh, yes, a call to deleted constructor of Qt core application, so we can't can't copy it. But yes, as you said, this is this is not this is no good because we want we only want to we only want to call app.quit after the second time that this this callback is is run. So we can say if sound dot is playing, or rather if not sound is playing, then we'll call app.quit. Hide that for you.
Okay. So, let's try and run this, see what happens. I like the run button is enormous in presentation mode. I've got to sit here and listen to this again. I wish I'd picked a shorter sample now. Um, and now the process is finished with exit code zero. The process is finished. Well, that's good. Uh, we've also got this <coughs> unexpected null receiver thing. And to be honest, I was looking at this for about an hour this afternoon, and I have absolutely no clue why it's doing that. I said I wasn't a QT expert. Um, I suspect I know. Uh, I've got a theory about why it's happening. But um, I haven't been able to work out exactly what's going on or how to fix it. So, uh, but who cares? Because our application's tearing down anyway. So it's. Um, I think it's trying to call the callback once, as it's destroying things. I don't know why it would be doing that, um, and I don't know how to avoid it. So. That's annoying, but there we are. Uh, I noticed it was also doing it just with the regular uh, sound, you know, the Q sound play, just the very simple one we did right at the beginning. So, yeah, that one makes no sense to me. So I don't really know how to avoid that or whether it's a problem, you know. For all I know, it's a bug in my implementation of QT. Let's put it down to that. Let's say, yeah, that's the reason, right? Yeah, it's not me. It's not me. Um, right. I think we're done. We've got an app that plays a sound and then quits when it's done. So what I really want to show you this, or just as a very brief example, first of all was how to use the Q sound and Q sound effect APIs. I actually wanted to show you Q Media Player as well, but like I say, it didn't actually it doesn't like my laptop for, for some reason. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one of the one of the, the interesting things I kind of wanted to demonstrate with this was this this way that when you're doing this kind of this kind of thing how how it's asynchronous. So we define the code up here, and then we set off the main loop down down here. So it's it's kind of out of order execution, right? It's, if, yeah. Could you show it using the process of the That's a very good idea. Um, so yes, we're, we're defining this callback up here. And this does nothing at the time we define it. It just links to, it links a signal to some code that will run when that signal fires. And then we kick off the main loop and then whatever it is, 10 seconds later or something, then it runs this this callback. So it's but sorry, the sound that plays not in the callback. Right? No. So what we do is we do our initial setup code, in which in our case includes sound or play, and only after that do we enter the main loop. So once we've entered the main loop, the system can only react to events. Right. So if we had a full GUI, we could have like a button that was. <coughs> Sorry, that was play sound, and then we could connect to that button and make it kick off this sound play. But once we've entered the main loop, at least without making the app more complicated, we've got no way of kicking off the sound. So we have to do that before we enter the main loop. Okay. Yeah. What does sound on play do? Plays the sound. Because it's, it's outside of the main loop, so it plays the sound and ends. No, it, uh, as far as I know, and I, I haven't really delved into it all that much. It tells the sound to start playing. Um, but the implementation, as far as I know, goes off and does things like loads the file asynchronously and will get a signal back when the file is loaded. And then it will, it's probably got some background process, that, some background thread perhaps, that you know, actually interfaces with the, the uh, operating system commands to open the sound device and, and all of the things that he needs to do. Because it's a very high level API for, 
You know, you're not having to mess about with sound drivers and all the horrible things that you might have to do if you're using something like Alta. So you're just telling it to play, but it needs to go. So and when, but what, under the hood, this is doing something like talking to the operating system, saying, "Please can I please open the sound files, the, the sound device," and it might have implemented that. It probably has implemented that as a an asynchronous signal based thing. So it will say to the operating system, open this for me, and it will get a signal back when that device is open, when that device is ready for use, or when the file when the file is loaded from disk. So in order to receive those signals, it needs the main loop to be churning away. Oh, okay. So this tells it to start playing, but it probably doesn't actually do anything until the the main loop kicks off. Probably. As we found out, just it, well, it definitely it definitely needs the, the, the main the main loop because when we just tried it with a while loop, it didn't do anything. So the, the program itself is completely asynchronous with Qt. Yes, in the, in 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 that it, it reacts to callbacks and uh, asynchronous programming means different things to different people. But uh, yes, in that sense. I mean, uh, to some people, asynchronous means multi-threads and parallelism and all of that. This isn't, or at least our interface to it, it may be using threads in its implementation. We don't know. We don't care. Uh, but yes, this to me, I'd call this asynchronous. <coughs> so it's a bit different to the, what we've what we've done in this class so far, where we've, you know, just handled a list of instructions and begun at the beginning and ended at the <coughs> end. Uh, so if you've used, I mean, people who do a lot of JavaScript programming are, are very used to programming in this style because you react to events and you end up calling this function which sets up this callback and you end up 15 layers deep of lambdas, which, you know, that's fun. But it's quite simple compared to like a standard C++. This is? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like the, the, we put very little code and we actually get stuff going. Yeah, and that's that's one of the tremendous things about Qt is that it has these very powerful high-level uh, APIs that really hide a lot of the gory details from you. Um, um, I think Qt is a bit like Marmite, right? Some people really love it because it is it is so powerful and we've we've got what is that? Twenty four lines of code, right? Yeah. A lot of them are white space. Oh that twenty four lines of code for the whole file. Um, and it's very little code and we've got it to play this sound. Uh, and there isn't, as far as I know, a sound playing API in Boost, but you can imagine if there was, it would probably be nested fine. templates and because the people who like the Boost style APIs, they want ultimate low level control. Uh, whereas Qt says, you know what, for most people, this is going to be good enough. And actually, there is a lower level API than this. Cool. What? Okay. There's a roof's not going to fall in or something. Um, there's another one called QAudio, I think it is, which is a lot lower level again. So, yes, Qt has a lot of different, uh, a lot of different ways of doing, of doing things. So. If we would use this code, should we then remove the QD bug uh, and to like tidy up? So we oh, sure, use, yeah. I mean, <coughs> uh, no, it was in, in include. Oh, yeah, if you're not caught, well, that QD bug function is quite, it's, as you saw, it's, a it's essentially like standard C out, except that um, you can also do things like QD bug message like that and that works which doesn't work see out um, but you can pass objects to it um, and it understands some QT types that see out doesn't so QD bugs so that from the include we have to have the, the mandatory is the Q core application and Q sound effect yeah so we're using we we need to include Q Q core application because we're using it here. 
we need to include cue sound effect because we're using it here so you can see if I just if I comment this out this should turn red because yeah. it doesn't know what that type is anymore and it's in fact saying do you want to me to include it and the same again if I take that out it doesn't know what those things are so there are a couple of options now um, I've done enough coding it's your turn uh, a couple of options the first one what I think would be quite nice uh, now that Ollie's not here <laughs> to tell me to keep working on the Pomodoro. Um, assuming that your laptop works better than mine and the Q Media Player works on yours, you try taking this and using the Q Media Player API. And you'd have to look at the documentation for which is, what signals are, what signals you need to use. <coughs> but Q Media Player, when it works, is a lot more powerful. So you can use, it can understand MP3 files as well as WAV. So sound effects is very simple. As far as I know, it only does WAV files. Uh, Media Player is much more powerful. It can, you can do video as well if you really want it to. But it does MP3s and uh, whatever other audio formats people use. Uh, it's going to understand them all. So the first, it's up to you. You can either transform this into, so start using Q Media Player, and then as a second step, allow people to supply a file name, a file name on the command line, and then get Q Media Player to play that file. So be a, you know, a mini MP3 player. You just call play sound with the file name, and get it to play, and then it'll quit when the. I think that would be quite a good exercise. The other thing is what I was planning on doing, but I've lost my code, uh, which was um, getting you to use either Q sound or Q sound effect to add uh, this alarm noise when the Pomodoro timer counts down to zero. So it's up to you which one you want to do. It's so which one? I can ask which one you want. What do you want? If you, you can answer. Let's try turning this into a media player because uh, to do that you're going to have to read the documentation and you're going to have to you know decide what signal to connect to and that sort of thing.
So if you um, so if you if you were to uh, file those settings, I'm going on file settings. So then go down to uh, build execution point and CMake. Okay, so what we want to do is to add a CMake option. Make underscore prefix bar. All capitals. Yeah. Oh, it actually tells you what the variable name is in there. But basically, I want to set that to a directory that uh, where we can see is You must make you must set some make prefix bar for me. You just did set the same make prefix bar. Huh. I'm going to try and do what I did from my system. I was relying on the one we made. Who's coming out of that whole thing? The author. But I know all of the bit from if win32 is going down to end if. So it's. Um, I am not one of those, one of those guys I am demonstrating right now, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll do it next week.
Uh, perfectly fine. Mac and Linux, Mac and Linux, I can I can work. Um, unfortunately, Windows is is <coughs> no, with too much. Not my Just thing. what? You don't want to download the 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 the, the, the files from uh, Oliver? He created a virtual machine right. to make it life easier for everyone. Yes. <coughs> if you go to our website, cpplondonuni, go to blog. Over there you have the link to Oli uh, VM, download that and start and you will have basically everything the, the whole environment ready for a couple of lessons. I mean it's there, so you can download quite quickly because very fast connection here. Yeah. Um it's easy to see as well, don't you? So maybe the Oh right. Um oh, I'm trying to go through just the latest one before I forget. Yeah. Oh sorry, I thought you I thought you were saying it didn't work, you were getting error messages that I wasn't really happy. Still occupied, thirty gigabytes on the hard drive. Yeah, I think it's something about you're supposed to select a small part of it because it, it does offer you a chance to add in. That, 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 can't, that, that can't be right. 38 gigabytes. source and uh, it's not that big. Um, you can't, you can't get gigs. Well, definitely not. At the moment like 30 megs but it would be bigger than that. Um, yeah, at least it, it sort of presented you that option as a start. Yeah, the other thing you could do is uh, only put together this uh, virtual machine. Yeah. You can so you run it in VM by player and it puts yeah. up this in this instance. It's got so all the stuff in there already. So he did it to avoid <coughs> this kind of difficulty. And where do you get that? Go to cppondonuni.com. Yeah. Uh, from you there, go to blog. the blog there is uh, preparation for uh, preparation material for 18th class you could click on that one <coughs> and then there is a link to Google Drive at the bottom <coughs> and then you have three files one is big the four gigs and the other one they are just in mini
At least the beeping stopped. Look on the right side. Is that what you're looking at? No, no, I've got this just in my name from shit and finally went in Linux in the first place. So all I had to do was a few like get installs. French language introduction to QT, that's something I can't offer. Signals and slots. Change that to 11 and see if it works. Probably not. But we'll give it a try anyway, just first. Anything else? This is a similar domain. So that, that set scene makes that would just be way to Give me two seconds and look up with what the command is. C makes CSX flags, that's the one.
it's doing. Yeah, I thought, well, it's a long -term yeah, CentOS, that's, I mean, that's the appeal of it, for if you're a business running internet service, yeah. you obviously want this. Nick, I'm going to go, I'll stick a version of the 
Yeah, is this... Um, yeah, I mean, you could try running the VM. Yeah. On it, and, that, uh, and that's got all the... That's a really up-to-date version. Oh, okay, yeah. So that website um, we put up has, has this bank up-to-date SUSE Linux installed. It has all oh, wow. the dev tools and everything already on it, so you could give that a try if you wanted to. So, yeah, sorry, it's, um... <laughs> How do I deal with it? Yeah. How did you? Because it always is that it doesn't like being called from within an SDR thread. Yes. So you're, you're doing that one. That's, that's why I'm really annoyed, because I've, I've had some code that I wanted to show you. That because I actually took out the threaded Pomodoro and there's a task of Qtool that basically does exactly what you want and fires a signal uh, when the time is finished, which is then you could connect that to the play slot of the Q sound effects, and that's what I wanted to kind of. I wasn't going to show you all of it, but I was going to do it. I couldn't get the. Did you put some in the directions? But you seem like you know what you're doing, so if you want to uh, go ahead and, and try and use uh, Q type on it instead of the uh, threaded Pomodoro implementation, that was my recommended way of doing it. Right. So it's not a replacement of that rather than actually trying to adapt it. Well, uh, yes, basically. I mean, if you've got a. Yeah. We're already using QT, it's got this type of class that does what you want, so why not? You know? Doing the other doing the time was a good exercise, but if the code's already there, you may as well use it. There isn't any sort of way with STL thread to sort of go back to the main, main sort of thread or anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could do something like um, there's a sort of C sharp land and things like that as an end bolt on the sort of main thing. Yeah, so you. you because you're getting into the QT thread API as well to be able to send an event on the main. Because the other thread to make it back to the main thread, then I can just use the QT stuff as usual. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the way standard thread works is that it executes a function on the, the other thread. So then you have to have some sort of semi course condition variables. It's, it's quite difficult to be missed. As I see old threads on the design, uh, they're pretty low level. They don't uh, yeah, have a lot of the built in functionality that something like Q thread does. Mm. So it's really just a, a sort of wrapper around uh, Linux P threads, if you know about that. It's, yeah. Highly efficient because it's literally an operating system threads. Excuse me for a moment.
So if you ask, go, go to shoot. See ya. Yeah, so see ya. Do you like that? So you've got a service, so the service is like running the web server. Yeah, so and then BB will be making like HTTP get and post requests. Okay, so in that case, the interface between the two is, is going to be the HTTP commands. Yeah, sorry. I Seems like this is literally just off the top of my head. That seems like a, a, a good possible direction to go. You could write your C plus plus code, but still use these extensions to call uh, .NET methods and like invoke .NET classes. So I mean, it might be. I mean, it sounds like you're trying to create the website using the BB .NET, yeah. Yeah. trying to call your C your new C code from the VB6 UI in effect. Ah right. So in that case you probably want to code it to the C plus plus DLA I guess and then call it from the VB6. Um, so, 
This would be fairly uh, tricky to maintain for these potentially less robust. My my concern is because I haven't as far as been looking at the DB stuff, but it's pretty closed down. It's been written down. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you should throw it away. It's more a case of if you can have it so that it just calls a web service to actually get the IDs and then displays it on the screen. That's It's got some stuff with the sort of C plus plus decorates and stuff. So um, I mean, it's talking about stuff cool stuff in here. So yeah, and this is the thing you have to sort of dig into that stuff and figure out calling and mentions and stuff and make sure they're correct. So it's gonna it'll be a lot of fun if you do go down this path. I mean, it's not like impossible or anything. It's just there are all these little details that you have to get right in order for it to work. And doing complex things, it's especially sort of complex. Use the translations in that. Oh, okay. yeah. so, yeah. 
takes a lot of setting up. Yeah, because you, you need to extract all the strings from the program and then get someone to translate them. And then at runtime, you need to choose which, or which packages to load. It's, it's quite difficult. Yeah, QT probably makes it easy. easy. QT, QT, QT makes most things easy. Except using the it makes it player, doesn't it? Is everyone having more difficulty with the setup than with the <laughs> actual C++? Uh, I'll install it and test it on the uh, code that we're using. Yeah, and once we... Make sure it's more robust. If we can, we'll get the, the, the virtual machine running. Um, yeah, I'll probably... Uh, I mean, it, it should be a big help. I think you're doing the right thing with your media player, by the way, Tom. I don't know why it's not working. What's failing? Uh, well, it's all compiled correctly, but at one time it's saying could not open resource for reading, even though it's the same, it's giving it the same URL. But with I think you've got having to put in an absolute path. I mean, oh. you put in the whole freaking thing. Ah, okay. Okay. This is the same, so this, this is the same uh, error that Tom's had. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I think what Collins just said is that you can't just give it a local file path, okay. it has to be an absolute. All right. Oh, so he's not going here, but he's going to the pub. Yeah, he could have helped with all this Windows stuff. Well, I don't know about. And Ollie as well. Well, we can kick his bottom. <laughs> so Ollie, was Ollie sick? Is that why he was? No, Ollie went to meet politicians. Bleep them. Uh, what's the, the older guy? Uh, Vince Cable. Vince Cable, oh, yes. Sorry. So he had a date with him. Date with Vince Cable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know who would be called the sun. I don't know who is so mad to do that, but anyway. Sorry. Um, I mean, sorry. Yeah. Q Media Player was uh, the API I wanted to try and get into use. It's so simple and yet it goes big. Exactly. That's a slightly less annoying sound, but only slightly. That's called deep peak. So is this for work? This all the time you've worked since. Thank you. The next one is the working virtual. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
See you next time. See you next time. I'm going to cut you off. No, 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 that's fine. So let's go see new faces. In a couple of weeks, isn't it, next time? Uh, is it only just next week? Yeah, next week. Next week. Next week. Trusting you with like something bigger. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it just means now I need to learn <coughs> new stuff. Yeah. And I was my heart was still learning on C sharp stuff, but now I'm like, now I can learn C sharp and C B and all these other things. Yeah, that sounds The power of Google to create my stuff. <laughs> oh, so ah, question. Do I have to call T E T? I think it's called Widget. Yeah. Oh, if I'm creating here new. Yes. Why are you creating why are you calling new rather than just creating a <coughs> stack? Uh well that's uh, that was my way of execution I found. I don't think you need to do that. I think you can just have a new. I mean, like. Uh, so, delete the style there. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, well, we, don't, we don't need that bit afterwards. And then change those arrows into dots. And it should also work when you don't have to delete it at the right time. Actually, fine. What was going on with my media player? It's what? just the absolute versus local file part. Yeah, no, I suspect so. Yeah, I mean, which operating system are you running on? Macintosh. Uh, it has it's different backends, so. I, I, I came across a problem where it was saying couldn't find Debian or something like that. Oh. And I had to install an extra package to get the sort of G Stream. G Stream is yeah. the node that you need, as well as that absolute thing. Yeah, the error message was just, I don't understand how to decode this file. Mm -hmm. File not found, which I would have, yeah, would have been a hint to go to the absolute. It just, yeah. Well, we've got anybody online? Still four people. So it's definitely not me. I couldn't be in four, four, you know, four copies of my stuff. But we haven't had any questions. It was quiet. No. There was one question here. <coughs> From Colin, you will. Uh, so he's he's, well, I suspect he's sitting right over there. No, I was just noting that error that I had had before I installed the G stream of Bunny. Ah, uh, okay. What is the time? Uh, <coughs> it is 53, so seven minutes. So now you've got that working, can you get it to quit? We've got about five minutes to do it. 
So we did it before with the Q sound effect class. Can you do it with the Q media class? seems a little more than a lot of people think it's the absolute bees knees it's this and that and other people just can't believe it yeah <coughs> uh, still yeah. have one inside yeah. haven't actually So I guess we ought to pack up and go home. But uh, thank you for coming. Sorry to, well, there's only one of you left who couldn't run anything. But uh, we'll get all this sorted, <laughs> VM, etc. Uh, yeah. So thanks very much, everybody. So the next class is next week.
Uh, we will be meeting either Thursday or Friday, we need to set this up. Uh, we usually meet up uh, in uh, eat next door uh, for lunch. So if anybody fancy it, just join us. Uh, then we'll discuss what we'll be doing for the next class. I suspect it will be some sort of continuation, so there's like a, so you can basically pick up from where you uh, get on. If you have any feedback for us, send me an email. Uh, you know, it's very useful to, to know what you're thinking because without you, we we just we didn't uh, you know come up with the idea to read your mind. Yes, it's quite quite difficult. So. I mean, we could try to do that as, as the next project. Yeah, that's, that's a, a very good thing. The QT mind reading API. Yeah. Q mind reader. <laughs> uh, so those who are keen, you're very welcome to join us for the year. Thank you. Otherwise, it's just going to be me and Tom, and that's going to be awkward. Oh, are you coming as well, Rob? Uh, not today. Not today? It's a bit too cold. Yeah, because if I go, it would be on the weekend. said was better for doing it. This, he, he tested inside. So <coughs> try, try to use this one. If you have any problems, just, just drop me an email or go to the, our Slack channel. Are you on our Slack? <coughs> then you can always ask the question because you know the guys, you know, I'm not only there, not only me, but you know, now it's I think something like 40 people. Uh, so <laughs> if you join, then if you have a question, something is not clear. Somebody might be able to give you a hand with, you know, either things or, you know. No problem. Thank you for coming. So, yeah, same time next week. If you, uh, if you fancy coming back, we'd be happy to see you.